a curator here told me that once when she was in the vault, uh, she saw a box with a post-it note on it. And the post-it note said, do not open. Well, inside that box was a giant phonograph record. The Huntington has one of the nation's largest collections of Lincolniana. Among our vast archive of manuscripts, artifacts, and source material is a recording of an eyewitness account of the assassination of Abraham Lincoln. And it's the only known copy. The 1933 recording was produced by Lang Studios in Hollywood, California, and features the actor Joseph H. Hazelton. Uh, he recounts his childhood memory of being a program boy at Ford's Theater the night of the assassination. And the recording itself is a 16-inch shellac transcription disc. Uh, shellac transcription discs are notoriously fragile. and Not many survive from the early 30s. They were used to syndicate radio programs at a time when radio was mostly live and long before tape came along to record any program that was needed. The Huntington created a digital audio version of the transcription disc, and there's a portion of that recording that I wanted to share, but I also wanted to include an image of the disc itself. But a quick search revealed it had never been documented by our imaging services department. The disc is kept in our vault along with our most valuable objects. So. I reached out to Jenny Watts, curator of photography and visual culture, for help. Uh, she's the one who told me about the audio, and she was able to arrange for it to be brought up from the vault and delivered to the conservation lab. If we wanted to photograph it, then the disc had to be handled by somebody from the lab. So Jenny reached out to Jessamy Glore, a conservator here, and Jessamy was kind enough to help. So. The three of us accompanied the disc from the lab uh, to imaging services. It was quickly documented and safely returned to our vault. Our vault was built in the middle of the last century and designed to survive an atomic bomb. In its cramped spaces are kept our rarest objects and documents, uh, George Washington's letters, our first folio, etc. But why Joseph Hazelton's recording? He was not the only witness to the tragedy, and his retelling is marred by his insistence on a conspiracy theory that John Wilkes Booth not only escaped, but lived into the 20th century. And Mr. Hazelton's career as an actor didn't leave much of a trace. His biggest claim to fame, perhaps, is appearance in the 1922 silent film version of Oliver Twist. So I sat down with Olga Sapina, the Norris Curator of American History and also the curator who acquired the disc in 2009, and I asked her, why is it so valuable that it's kept in the vault? Um, so the vault is the most secure place. It's, for one thing, it's earthquake proof. So God forbid there's a tremor, at least it's not going to f fall on the floor and shatter. So, so it's not that it's this, it's not, it's more literally oh, no, it's, it's fragile state no, than it's, it's historical it's, no, value. It, no, it's a conservation. It is, it is historical value because it's for a, hi a history of the assassination is of li very little value. But it's actually, a, it's, it's a pretty sizable, I would say, research value for people who study the mythology and the memory of the assassination and the assassination popular culture of uh, the... Um, uh, genesis and circulation of various conspiracy theories. So um, it is actually has an enormous research potential, just not for, for the Lincoln era. And here's the portion of his monologue I wanted to share, the portion that deals with the night of April 14th, 1865. The President's party came late. And as the party entered the theater, the orchestra played hail to the chief. audience rose in mass and cheered. President Lincoln came down to the edge of the box and with that sad, sweet smile that he was wont to wear on such occasions, bowed his acknowledgments and the play went on. I was standing looking directly up at the President's box, smiling when he smiled, all enraptured with that wonderful face. He was an idol to me. I happened to turn my eyes to the right, to the main entrance, 
I saw Wilkes Booth enter. He spoke to Mr. Buckingham, the doorkeeper, for a few moments. I marveled at the change in his costume. When he spoke to me in the afternoon, he was faultlessly dressed in the picturesque costume of the day. Velvet collar and cuffs, ruffled shirt. Now he had on heavy cavalry boots, spurs, blue army shirt and a slouched army hat. As he went up the steps to the right, towards the dress circle, and then towards the president's box, I wondered in my childish way what he could be doing there in such a garb on such an auspicious occasion. I didn't have long to wait. There was a flash and a report. President Lincoln had been assassinated. There are not words enough in the vocabulary of the English language to describe the awful hush fell over that house when the shot was fired. Everyone seemed to realize that something terrible had happened, but no one seemed to take the initiative till Laura Keene, coming from her dressing room, ran down to the edge of the stage and cried out, Ladies and gentlemen, the president's been shot by John Wilkes Booth. Then all was pandemonium. When Booth fired the shot from a simple single-barreled weapon, commonly known as a derringer, dropped the weapon and drew a knife. Surgeon General Barnes attempted to stop him and received an ugly gash in the arm. Booth got to the edge of the box, leaped over. As he did so, his spur caught in the flag that draped the box. He tripped and fell to the stage. I shall never forget to my dying day the look of anguish and despair on that man's face as he half dragged and half limped to the center of the stage with a wild maniacal stare brandished the knife above his head and cried out, Six Amper Tyrannus! Thus perished tyrants. He managed to get out to the stage entrance, mounted his horse, and drove away. Mr. Hazelton has an attractive leaflet made of this address with a portrait of himself and personally autographed and would be pleased to mail a copy to anyone desiring it if you will send your address and any small contribution to cover the actual cost of production and postage. Address, Joseph H. Hazelton, 5353 Virginia Avenue, Hollywood, California. Or, address Mr. Hazelton to the station to which you are now listening. 